so do I. I've always acted like a little boy, even though I'm almost ten. The room where Mommy is, the attic, is in the hallway upstairs, right outside my bedroom door. When my door is open, you can see it from anywhere in the room. It's nailed shut, so I can't go up there. Sometimes, I just sit on my lightning queen bed and stare up at it, wondering why Mommy is up there and what she's doing. Sometimes I can hear a shuffling noise coming from up there. Can she walk? Crawl? Can she even move? Daddy won't say anything. All he says is, she's fine. Don't worry. Just leave her be. He tells me to stop worrying about mommy. But I can't. I need to know. And tonight, I'm going to find out about mommy's illness. I decided to find out Saturday. At least, I think it was a Saturday. During the middle of the day, I snuck a hammer from the drawer in the shed. I also found a stepladder in there. I took them and hid them. I did it while Daddy was making dinner. That way he wouldn't know. I hid the hammer in the toy box next to the bed, under all my toys. Then I, stepped, then I set up the ladder next to the closet door. I would get them both later. A few hours later, after dinner, at bedtime, while Daddy was tucking me in, I began to plan things out. Around 2 a.m., I snuck into Daddy's bedroom across the hall and made sure he was sleeping. He was. Then I got the hammer out of my toolbox and the step ladder from the closet and went to the hallway. It was dark, but I could still see the attic well enough. I carefully placed the step ladder under the attic door, picked up the hammer, and quietly climbed the step ladder. It was harder taking the screws out, but I almost got all four of them. I hopped off the step ladder, making sure to be quiet, and moved out of its way. I pulled the long cord of the attic door, opening it. It felt like it hadn't been opened in ages. As I lowered the small square door, a strong, unidentifiable smell assaulted my nose. It smelled familiar. Something I smell when I get hurt. Blood? Maybe. I slowly unfolded the segmented ladder leading to the attic until it reached its full length. I just stood there for a while and peered into the darkness within. All these weeks, I have been left wondering about Mommy. Now I can get to know. Gathering my courage, I climbed up the ladder and stepped into the dusty, dry attic. I looked about, trying to find Mommy, searching, but only with my eyes. I didn't want to move, but I had to. I was on the edge of one side of the attic. I slowly made my way to the other side, one step at a time. This took minutes, one step at a time. I told myself I was halfway across the attic, almost there, I thought. Then I made a mistake. I couldn't see where I was stepping. My left foot landed straight on a loose nail, stepping into the dark floorboards. I let out a soft yelp and fell forward onto the floor, catching myself on something cold with the side of the, my left forearm, probably a table. I quietly gathered on myself. Luckily, I fell very softly and didn't wake up Daddy. I sat cross-legged and examined my punctured foot. It hurt. It hurt a lot. But it wasn't really bleeding. The nail must have been blood, though. I checked it. Sure enough, it was. Hey, I thought to myself, I can see things better. My eyes had adjusted to the dark. Then I felt the cold thing. It was slowly moving down my arm. I knew what it was. I could feel it. I looked at my arm. I saw the cold thing, wet and dripping and black, just like my blood. This was blood. I heard a soft hissing noise from behind me. I turned, and on the blood-covered operating table, lying with surgical tools, was Mommy. Each of her severed and decaying limbs each of her piling out rotting teeth, and both of her fluid oozing severed head and naked torn torso were hissing. It was actually hissing, but it wasn't just hissing, it was moving. 
Every splayed out limb on the table was moving towards the decomposing torso. When a severed limb or bone got close enough, it would snap back into place with a thick crunch or a sickening plouch. I stood in absolute horror as I witnessed my dead mother somehow piece herself back together. The body was pulling itself like a jigsaw puzzle, figuring out what goes where and how it goes. It was thinking. It knew what it was doing. But worst of all, it was beginning to move and talk. She turned her filthy, blood and cursed head to me, followed by the sound of snapping tree branch. Her eyes met mine. Her eyes were the only part of her decomposed body that were fully intact, and they were still so full of life. My mother let out a soft, groaning voice. My name is Annie. Her flesh ripped from her tight jaw as she moved her mouth. Danny, sweetie, listen to me, mother. Get out of the house now. She brought her beautiful dark brown eyes to mine. Her eyes were just like mine. At the moment, I knew she wasn't going to hurt me. She sat up, grabbing a bone saw from the table, and said, Run along now, sweetie. everything. My mother walked up to me, patted me on the back, and said, Remember, I'll always love you. Now go. I heard Dad scream as I left the house. Apparently, Dad screamed so loudly that he made the neighbors wake, who then called the police. They arrived at my house about ten minutes later. When they entered my house, they were greeted to a gruesome sight. My father was mutilated to pieces. Almost too many to count. Fingers, toes, limbs, entrails, and anything you could think of as a pile of, as of a pile of crusty thick blood. My mother, however, was the same way I found her. The exact same way. My father didn't even get to fight back. I now understand what my father did to my mother and why this all happened. Mother and father were never on equal terms. They were always arguing. Almost literally over nothing. Their marriage was unstable, to say the least. They were always shouting, and I guess my young mind blocked it all. Regardless of what had happened, I miss both my mother and father. But I live in a good home, with good people now. It's a foster home. My caretakers, Bill and Sue, are an older couple. Their views are comparable to most adults, but they're good people. They even planned my birthday this year in advance. I'm turning 15. But that's the end of this little story. I miss my parents dearly, but I have a great life. I'll never forget my mother's official last words to me. Remember, I'll always love you. Now go. I love her too, though. In fact, I love her so much that I took her sickness away from her. It happened when I heard my father scream before he died that night. Turns out, it's contagious. Her disease has gotten to me. Has become a part of me. And now you know what? I'm glad. I can spread this disease in honor of my late mother. I can spread this type of love my father gave to mommy. The type of love you have to give an arm and leg to receive. Of course, some fingers... A hand, and I? <laughs> you name it. Thanks for listening, but I have to go now. I have something to do. You see, yesterday at school, I noticed that the girl I like had a red handprint the size of a grown man's across her face. I've just found the handprint is her father's. I guess it's time to finally do it. It's time to pass on mommy's illness.